Yo. So your next task is a task one. These are my favourites because I, uh, in my degree, statistics was the only module in which I scored 100%. So I consider myself quite the data fiend. So I like correcting these ones. So the bar chart above, I would say, or Ethan's fine. The bar chart illustrates the forecasted visits to four cities. I would use a comma here and put namely London, Paris, Madrid and Istanbul. By tourists from three countries, Mexico, Canada and the USA in 2018. So we, we don't need a comma here. This is just a complete sentence. It is clear that, and also this, it is clear that Paris is the favoured destination. Yes, it is clear that Paris is the favoured destination for travellers from the United States. So this is far too many words. We don't need this. And we don't want to talk about favourite, because favourite implies that we're talking about other people's opinions. We don't, we're not, that, um, that is not information that's contained within the chart. That's uh, information that we do not have access to. And in task one responses, we must never include any information that is not in the graph itself. So nothing is surprising, nothing's lovely. Um, nothing's favourite. There are no feelings in task one. So it is clear that Paris will be the favoured, or is expected to be the favoured destination for travellers from the United States at a hundred thousand projected visits. And then I would go on to say London and Madrid in a different area, because the if we're in these essays, when we group information together, it must still be related. So here, what you've done is you've introduced the graph, summarized the graph, and then just written one long tale about the graph. But what this, this is bad for coherence and cohesion, because the mind expects data and information to be grouped together. So in academic writing, that's exactly what we do. The whole point of academic writing is that we put in a great deal of effort to ensure that the reader needs to only put in a tiny amount of effort. So academic writing should be incredibly difficult to write, but very easy to read. And that's sort of how the examiners are looking at your work. They expect to be illuminated easily by what they read. So information needs to be grouped together, statements need to be clear, data needs to be referenced appropriately and consistently. Everything just needs to be nice and as expected, because academic writing talks about complicated subjects, and so it's very important that it's laid out in simple and accurate terms. So in future, when we do task ones, try to comment on maybe everything the USA is doing, everything Canada is doing, everything Mexico is doing, with then, or maybe even one paragraph for the individual countries, one paragraph for the individual cities, one paragraph for the overall major trends and groups that we can see, and then a summary, and uh, uh, sorry, yeah, a conclusion and an introduction. So my advice on this one would be that, but let's correct some more sentences one by one to see if we can result, so to see if we can arrive at some smoother methods of referring to this data. I would steer clear of this sort of phrase here. You could say which are projected to receive this number of visits, but again this is an estimation, a projection, a forecast. So we can't talk about what will happen. No one can tell the future with certainty. So we do not speak about the, the future with certainty where none exists. So we need to always talk about um, 
what they are projected to receive or what they are you can say what they are expected to re to receive um, but w including the word will be implies some sort of certainty and I don't believe there's any there uh, also this is correct but you didn't do it here this to an examiner would be glaringly obvious uh, we must be consistent uh, with our punctuation and if you leave one out there and put one in there it's a very clear error correctly used respectively phrase that's good this is the sort of thing that works very well in these sorts of essays it allows you to state multiple points of data in a single sentence cleanly to master this phrase uh, is essential for these tasks. So before proper nouns like cities we do not use articles. So it's just Istanbul. Istanbul is expected to be the least visited by Americans in 2018. For Canadians the most popular city to travel to will be Istanbul at 70,000 visits, whereas about half of these visits will be expected to Madrid. I would say, okay, so one, this is correct, but this um, this comma here is not needed. Whereas, I would say, whereas only around half of these visits are expected in Madrid. Visitors to Paris and Istanbul do not differ in number considerably. Uh, or visits to Paris and Istanbul by Canadian nationals do not differ in number significantly at 45,000 and 50,000 respectively. It is projected that Madrid will be the destination of choice so we can say will be if we have said it is projected before it it is projected that M Madrid will be the destination of choice for travelers from Mexico with just over 60,000 visitors or tourists So we don't need this here. We can, If we're going to name the cities, we don't need to say the other two cities. We can just say London and Istanbul show equal numbers of tourists, comma, while Paris, no comma, while Paris will be expected... Well, Paris is expected to be... I don't know, I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be. Do you mean the spot of choice or the, the top spot? I'm not sure. This is unclear. To summarize, the chart shows that in the, the United States represents the highest numbers expected to travel to different cities, followed by Canada and Mexico. Yes, but I would expect some more detail here. And also this comma is unnecessary. So what we need to focus on is reducing errors. I'd say at the moment we're writing at about, about a band 6, band 6.5, uh, but you're going to want to be much higher than that by the end of these corrections. So pay particular attention to the articles, prepositions and pronouns um, and grouping your information, your ideas together in a more cohesive uh, fashion. Identify groups and then talk about them in paragraphs. That will help you considerably. So once again, I'm going to upload this. I'll move on to your next video. Speak to you shortly.